Hey, this is Dave from Retired Time Productions, and I'm back with another video about the Polaris. This time I've moved the batteries further to the back to adjust the CG, and we're going to go out and do a test flight at the lake at the Float and Fly and just see how it all works. There's going to be some HD footage and some FPV footage, so stay tuned. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So I'm almost done with the moving of the batteries to the back. So now the batteries are back here in the back where I can plug them in right there instead of being in the front. And now the plane is a little tail heavy just like I wanted because I wanted to add this camera. So this was all about adding this camera to the front. So I've got the FPV camera right here that I used to fly with and this is my HD cam. Now it goes right there. And now you can see when I put that on, it's just slightly nose heavy, which is perfect. That's the way I wanted it. So in order to do this, I had to take the vector, the flight controller, and move it forward and make a new compartment for it. I had to tear everything out. It was a mess. And then I made the battery compartment back here because the batteries were up front. So there it is. I've got all the wires. I put the power module for the vector back here behind the ESC and the wires and things are running in these panels. So this panel has all the wiring from the power module coming up this way and also the servo wires. And then this side has the GPS wire coming from here and it has the easy UHF cable going back to the rear antenna back here. And that comes right through here. You can see the, the uh, GPS and that cable. So that's it right there. So I've got these like wire channels behind here between like uh, two walls right here. So it's three walls thick and the wires are hidden in there. So this is all sealed up. So even if water gets in here to the batteries, and it probably will if it flips upside down in the water, it won't get to the vector because I'm going to have a piece glued over this and everything's sealed. There's also a firewall here, one here, so hopefully no water will get into where the vector is. The USB extension cable came in and I received it today and went ahead and put it in. I plugged it in here to the the Nano Easy UHF and then run it across and brought it out here, just glued it in the fuselage right here. I'll put a piece of tape over this when I'm flying to keep debris or water from getting in it but there it is and now I can go ahead and put the top on I think I'm going to glue one piece right here to seal this chamber off and then put a piece here and maybe tape it on and then of course I'll have a door here for the batteries so I now have the top of the Polaris completely covered the Depron is all sealed off now and I've made a hatch right here it's actually a raised hatch, has a little well in here to give me extra room for the batteries and for the connectors for the batteries. And I am a little concerned that this may disrupt the airflow where it doesn't get to the heat sink for the ESC as well as it should. But we'll just go ahead and try it out. Now I only went over the wiring briefly. If you want to know more about how I made the changes to the wiring and how I move the batteries and everything. I'll put that at the end of the video so you can view it there. Otherwise you can just stop the video after the flight. But let's go out to the lake at the float and fly and go ahead and test this thing and see how it works. I'll see you out there. Okay we're here at the Pirates of the Sky float and fly and let's take the Polaris out for a little run, a nice test run. You take that. Mm -hmm. Got it? Yeah. You want to put it on your head or anything? No, I'm just going to hold it like this. Huh? Okay, aim it at the plane? Yep. And it's on, right? Yep, it's blinking. Whoa. Dad, did you wreck it? 
I'm gonna run up here. Yeah. I got it. I'm over the trees actually now. Yep. I'm gonna set this down here so I can get a steadier picture. Yeah, I'm about 10 feet away, Dave. Oh, okay. Man, you're way out there. I can hardly yeah, I'm see you. Around. Yeah, I'm just getting a nice view of the lake. It's got the lamp, you know, long range stuff on it, so I want to see what I can see. Oh, yeah. I'm low now. I'm looking at 75 feet. Yeah, I see you. I got you. It's being freehand, I don't know how steady I'm holding it. Okay, coming over the dock at 150 feet. Yeah, I got it. I think I'm going to go out towards the road and come around so I don't get in the Oh boy, that's tough. Oh, it's over top of you. <laughs> it's tough to see. <laughs> Alright, I managed to stay down the tree that time. Oh, you did real well. You're good. I can see really good, but it's uh, coming over the dock again. I got it. The wind is kind of fighting. Oh, yeah. Hey, here I come by the dock. I got that boat in the view. Uh huh. Need to turn, Dave. You're laying out on the ground? Yeah. Huh? I had to. I ran out of juice. Oh, okay. <laughs> So in conclusion, after the flight, I noticed the heat sink for the ESC was really, really hot. So I'm wondering if that's why I had the loss of power and couldn't climb back up. The motor actually was running after the landing, but I didn't notice uh, anything wrong. It finally did cut off, almost like it was trying to return to home. I did not see the return to home mode come up on the screen. It stayed in uh, 2D which is basically stabilize mode. I didn't see a fail safe. I noticed the battery voltage got down below 11.6, but if you look at the safety screen for the vector, 
there is no ba low battery fail safe that I can find anywhere and I didn't see a warning on the screen or any change of mode so to me I just think it was the heat sink getting overheated probably from a not enough airflow going over it so that was my conclusion maybe I need to build a scoop here to kind of funnel the air right over the heat sink or just go to a larger heat sink or maybe a bigger ESC so there are there's all kinds of things I could do the easiest one would probably be just build a scoop to funnel the air over it. so that's it that's the flight and that's the conclusions now I'm going to show more details on the wiring so if you want to stay tuned and see that you can otherwise this concludes the video talk to you later so this is a follow-up on my Polaris build I decided I wanted to move the batteries so I've completely removed the top and I'm moving all of the hardware around so the batteries used to be up in this area and because it was uh, actually a little bit nose heavy I'm going to move the two batteries back in this area and then move the vector the flight controller up into this area so to do that I'm going to have to extend some wiring probably leave the ESC where it is but I needed to get in here and splice into these servo wires to extend them also I took some wires off this lead here that comes from the power module to the vector I took the wires off that feed the video just to remove them off this plug here took a needle and lifted the tabs and removed the wires so I removed all three of these plugs because I'm not using them basically these were the wires that would normally feed the video down here but I'm feeding it with an LC filter instead which then goes over to pick up the uh, voltage from the power module so doing it a different way well, that's the way I found worked the best for me and I'm going to continue to do it that way so everything gets moved forward batteries get moved backward the easy UHF is I've got it right here now but I'll probably move that forward to just get everything out of the battery compartment and seal up the vector and all those components up in the front it's not moving that far probably about maybe this far like uh, three inches or something and then I'll move the firewall back behind it it's more like a bulkhead I guess to keep the water from getting to it so this part in here will be open between two bulkheads and the batteries will go in there okay I'll get back to you after I get more of it done so just a quick rundown for my reference on how these wires go so the uh, UBEC is plugged in right here this is the 5 volt UBEC with a red wire at the top and then we have the wire coming here from the ESC so that's the throttle channel so the ESC white wire at the top and uh, oh yeah this red wire on the UBEC is actually the second one down so the top one is empty so all the white wires or yellow wires with the grounds I mean with the with the signals are at the top so signals are at the top so yeah so we have the throttle from the ESC right here and then we have the elevator channel and then the aileron channel and then we have the rudder right here and then finally we have the PPM signal that goes to the easy UHF is plugged in right here so that's the basic wires and then in the front of course we have the power module connector right here so that's pretty much it I gotta remember to put the USB port I'm gonna have to move that USB port back a little bit and that plugs in there so that's all the basic wiring and I'm going to be extending these wires from the servos okay a little progress update I've got the vector mounted right here now I know it's a mess of wires I'm gonna have two of these batteries right here and here's what I've been working on I've put the power module for the vector right here behind the ESC 
And of course on the top is the heat sink for the ESC right there. And I've extended out my voltage tap, my 5 volt tap right here, so I can get up to the front here and add the U back to it and the video to it. And then I've also extended out the vector power module cable. If I can find that, here it is. Okay, vector power module cable. I had to extend that out, so that comes from the power module up to the vector and feeds the voltage to the vector. Plus the current sense and voltage sense, so you can see your current and voltage on the OSD. So those four wires I had to extend, and of course this just plugs up here. So a lot of extending. I also directly, also directly soldered the power module to the ESC instead of having a connector right here. So direct solder connection now, and this goes to the battery. And these three, of course, go to the motor. So that's what I've been working on right now. Just wanted to get a picture of it before I glue it down and it disappears again. So here it is. I've got the back plate glued down here and the wires running up along here. And there's the layout. So we got Nano Easy UHF, LC filter, vector flight controller, 5 volt u back and that's it. And then I plan on putting the firewall like right here and another one right here and to seal off this compartment make it watertight and the two batteries will go between a firewall here and here they'll go right in here and then this place up here will be more or less empty except except for the video transmitter which is going to go right there of course the camera's up front here and the GPS is right here with the wire running up to the vector. So that's what I got so far. Keep your light.